Welcome back, everybody, to a Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. In the last episode, we did Snow Go and Hang 8. And in this episode, we're going to do the Pits and hopefully Crash Dash. There's only one gem in this level, so we don't have to worry about coming back here a second time. Like we've done with the... Like what we've done with Turtle Woods and Hang 8. So here we go. This is another jungle... Uh, this is another jungle level. Hopefully, we do much better than what we have done. Well, well, the thing is, I'm kind of being a little bit hard on myself, but I normally wouldn't die in the first world. After that stupid glitch death I ha that, I, that had happened in a Turtle Woods... I was actually kind of thinking to myself, God, I cannot believe I died in the first level, but it was a glitch, and it was also a, but it was also a glitch, so I can't really blame myself for it. Now, the only th difficult thing, I wouldn't say hard, the only difficult thing about, you know, getting the, uh, of getting the, uh, cr the gem for this is, you know, you gotta take two paths. Now, I'm not gonna hit that. Uh, okay, I thought I jumped on it, but okay. Obviously the game did not think I jumped on it. Nice, that's nice of you, game. Now, this is the last box of this route. Grab the, grab the crystal and go back. And can you not get stuck on a mushroom? Thank you very much, Crash. Some, I, I don't know what's been going on lately. We're getting a lot of weird glitches. Now we hit that checkpoint. So that way, if we die, we can actually head back. And I'm surprised I did not run into that enemy. Hopefully I can go back without dying. Yes, I can. There's actually been a few times I've actually tried to go back. And I've fallen into a pit. It's not really fun. It's not really fun to backtrack into levels. It's not really fun to backtrack and just go to another area. Wish you could just get to, but that's the most tedious thing about about games. Sometimes they force you to, you know, do things you normally would not do. And for some reason, those things really have the habit of spawning at the wrong time, especially when, even though you know that you hit that steel crate on the other side. Now we are done. We are now done with that area. We don't have to come back. So let's hit this checkpoint. And let's do my little trick again, as I always do. I always do that. I, when I was younger, I used to fall into those pits because because I hated going into those pits with those little uh, uh, what are those things called? Are they called moles? Rats? I'm not sure what they're called, but they're annoying. Don't don't break those boxes yet, because as you saw. Gonna hit this steel crate, hit that box, jump on. Damn it! Ah! Ah, damn it. Okay. Man, I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm normally very good. Now, that's why you don't break these crates, because you got these two things up here. Obviously, you've noticed that. Unless if I was just too quick and you didn't know why, I decided to leave those boxes there. But, I'm pretty sure you're not blind. And if you are, I really do feel sorry for you. I really mean that in a good way. I, don't mean that in a bad way. I really do feel sorry for you if you really are blind. But, or, or, or deaf if you can't really hear my voice. Now, now we can break these boxes. Oh! That is the only annoying thing about this, about those boxes. And I really do hate the hit boxes and the jump. Well, I really do hate the jump. I don't hate it, but it's just annoying. It's just that you've got to get yourself in the right position to to nail it. There's one bonus I always mess up on. Because, you know, I rush it, but I'm not going to try 
I don't try to, to rush stuff, and oh great, now I'm gonna... You don't really have to do that duck jump, you can just jump like that. Oh, bloody hell. Come on, break. Oh, Jesus. Oh, of course. Uh, come on. Oh, good jump there, Crash. Good jump. I really hate it when those things don't break when you hope they when you hope they would. Okay, hit that box. Jump over the pit because I don't want to go into that hole. Jump over, over, and there's the exit. And there's our next gem. We are done with the pits completely, and we don't have to come back. Six minutes in, jeez. Gotta be serious, it took me six minutes just to complete the pits, while I did fall down a pit about twice in the bonus. Okay, Crash Dash. Now, these type of levels can either be fun, or scary. Depending on what type of person you are. If you, if you take it as fun, you'll enjoy it. But if you're scared, and if you be a scaredy cat, you'll be like, uh, what's about to happen here? So, what is about to happen here in... What in the world is that above me? If we move forward... Oh my god, there's a big giant snowball right after us! Now, okay, I'm not really that afraid of it, I'm just acting it out for you guys. Now, do you remember that old uh, boulder level in Crash Bandicoot 1? Yeah. They brought this back in Crash Bandicoot 2. But instead of having a boulder chasing you, I believe this is a snowball. I believe it's a snowball or is it a boulder? I think it's a boulder because it's able to squish you. Well, obviously, if, if it's able to squish you, then it's a, bol a boulder that just looks like it's been put in snow. They, they do this mechanic twice in Crash Bandicoot 1, but they do this mechanic three times uh, in this game. They do it twice with a boulder, and, well, I'm not trying to spoil it, but the third one, the third time, yeah, I actually have to run away from a big polymer. Now, the boulder falls down into a big giant pit. There's the crystal. There, here's a bonus that... I, I I really shouldn't say it's a hard one. I just like to hit those boxes so that way I don't have to worry about them. But make sure you do not run out into the open because if you try to go back, that boulder will actually instantly squish you. I've really never seen a possibility where somebody could actually get back into that hole before the boulder squishes you. Now, this is the annoying thing about this bonus. This tin, this... That, that right there. It's very, very tricky. You've got to trick it out. But this... This is the reason why I hate this bonus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh man, good, I did it. That is the most annoying thing about that bonus. Now, so if I was acting like a type of guy that would say, count along with me, and all that stuff, but I had to count this, and that way I would remember how many times you have to bounce off those things. You have to bounce off them, well, since I said it about four times, you would obviously figure it out by now, you got to jump off them eight times. But sometimes they're longer for some weird, weird reason. Okay, here's the annoying thing, you got to quickly get these boxes while the baller is chasing you and jump into the hole. Wow, I Wow, very good, very good, Patrick. And there's your, and there is your jam. We finished world one. 
We have completed world one. We've got all the crystals and all the gems, minus the red one. But that, well, basically our life. We didn't get all the gems. Good work, Patrick. Well, Cortex said he'd be back after the fifth crystal. Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognize. Although they cannot harm you inside this wood room, they can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next wood room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. I really do not know how many videos I'm going to do today. It is about really late in the morning. Wow, it's actually nearly 2 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, we're about to tackle our first boss. We're about to have a flashback to another old enemy from Crash Bandicoot 1. Ripperoo. Ripperoo. Now, Ripperoo is a very easy boss. There have been... There's actually been a few times in my life where I have accidentally died on this guy for no apparent reasons at all. He's really not that difficult. He's not a difficult boss at all. And he really shouldn't be hard for you. If you find him difficult, then... I really do feel sorry for you. He's really not that he's really not that hard. He was hard in the first game because you know he would move in just in three different directions. I will so, so I will give you that. If you find him hard in the first game, then I don't blame you. Okay, we gotta go over this over here. Now for the nitros, I believe you're going to stand right about here. It's a very tedious spot, but that's what they do. They put you right about here, and there you go. That's Ripperoo. He's dead. We have defeated Ripperoo in a very quick amount of time, actually. Just enough time to end the video. But before we end this video, we're about to move on. We move on to World 2. And we're about to get another cutscene. So after this cutscene, we'll end the video. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I see that River Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But like the business, there are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The plants will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to Properly utilized, however, your crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Dad, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have my power back. Oh, Coco is that she's trying to convince you not to trust Cortex, but we go over to this little panda bear. I actually want to show you guys something that's very cool. We jump on him enough times. I don't know how many times it is exactly, but if you do it enough times, you will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One ups. All right. That'll be all for today. I might... Should I do one more video? Uh, yeah, why not? I'll do one more video for you guys. That'll be all for today, guys. I'll do one more video, and then I will call it a day. This has been Patrick Valentine on the Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot 2. I hope you've enjoyed. See you guys next time.